Well, it was our 31st wedding anniversary the other day, and for a gift, my wife gave me some bamboo underwear. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined that there would ever be such a thing as bamboo underwear. Well, I've got them on, and i got to say, they don't feel too bad. <laughs> bamboo underwear. I just don't get it. Well, this video, today's video, I think is a very important one. And if you guys own a tree service out there, I think this could be very good for you to pass on to your guys because this is about learning how to read a tree. It's a particular species of tree, the sycamore, which I'm talking about today, which is a tree we trim quite often. We prune it. A lot of our complexes have them. And you really have to understand how to read the tree to help develop the tree, but also to see what past pruners have done to it and correct mistakes. So I'm going to show in great detail. I'm going to take you up in the bucket with me today and, and show you close-up shots of what I see and why I see it as a problem and show you how I correct it. And, and please feel free to comment. You know, if, if you don't agree with me, I want to hear that too. All right. You know, don't be afraid. Comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit the like button, you know, let's, let's help this channel grow because I'm really trying to help develop our community of, of tree workers and make this more, this channel more of a community of like-minded people who want to make things better. Back in 1980, when I was first interested in doing educational videos, I went back to college and took three years of television production classes as well as script writing classes. And one thing that I learned was that it's very important to plan your shoot and put it all together. Now, unfortunately, because of the way that I do these YouTube videos, I oftentimes wing it, which is what I'm doing today. But I kind of build the, the storyline in my head as I'm working. So as I'm thinking about what kind of a production I want to put together, I will take the shots as I go and I keep them in order on my camera. And then I put them onto the computer and I do my editing. And then I have to go back in and, and think about the story that I'm trying to tell. So today's story is really about how to read a tree. It's a specific type of tree, as I said, the, the London Plain. Uh, also called the sycamore in California and I want to talk in great detail about it so I'm going to show you a little bit about the, the job that we're doing and then I'm going to take you back to a larger version of the same tree so you know what these trees will become and the decisions mm -hmm. that you make in the early stages of pruning often reflect in what your ultimate outcome is Underdo it. This limb from this neighbor's sycamore tree is really, really long, but it's never been pruned. There are no cuts that I can see anywhere on that limb. But if you look over there, you can see that that tree was topped at one time, and there's some kind of a woodpecker hole or some kind of an animal up there. And if you look clearly at where that was topped before, you can see now there's a mass of, of new branches. So instead of being one long branch that kind of fills out normally, now you've got an excessive number of branches that are growing off of an area that was topped off before. Anyway, this tree's been cut back many times over here, and now you've got lots of branches over there. So because of the cutting, the people were the previous owners were afraid that this um, might fall on their roof, so they paid somebody to keep cutting it back. And now they've created a maintenance problem. Patio. So that if you drop any piece of wood on it, it just shatters. I can see clearly where that tree was cut before and it's hollow. I can see there's, there's a hole there. And very likely the same thing went on over here. Okay, I'm back over to the main trunk. That's the limb that I just got back from. You see, I left my lowering line over there. Well. 
Nothing wrong with old school techniques to get the job done. What? Where are your Nothing wrong with SRT. But I'm not going to talk about climbing today. I'm going to talk about the trees. And as you can see, one of the problems with this particular species of tree is that the dead branches just pop off. And if you're in a complex like we are here, a lot of people and children are playing under these trees. So the liability becomes a big part of the issue. Not only the liability, but you have to think about the future growth of these trees. If you continually come in and do improper pruning, then these trees are going to become maintenance nightmares or very unsafe. So in the case of these platinous acerfolias, the sycamores, we I went out and I did a job earlier that day on another tree in another location and interestingly these seed pods were just exploding. Very very different from what we were finding in the complex that we were working in. So in direct contrast to that other sycamore I went to the job that we had on hand and I was checking out these seed pods and as you can see they are not coming apart nearly as quickly so I asked that I had to ask myself why you know they are breaking up but is it a seasonal change in a different area is it a different cultivar that maybe these seed pods break up a little bit later but I want you to look at this we're chipping all of these hard seed pods and you can see what they're exploding into I got kind of irritated with Eric there. I told him, he, I said, you've got to put on a mask. That is not healthy at all. So let's get back up into the trees. I'm using the GoPro camera here with the wide angle lens. So it kind of distorts everything, but it does give you a better overview of the trees that we're working on. And, and a lot of these trees don't look like they need very much work. And I wanted to show you this is one that I've just finished. So it's still got a fairly natural framework to it. Some places I had to cut them back to the old cuts that someone else made, leaving a small continuation branch. Now a lot of you might look at these trees and say, oh, that tree doesn't look like it needs anything at all. That's the problem because of the way that these trees have been pruned in the past there are a lot of things that are developing a lot of problems that are developing a lot of areas up in the tree where we're having multiples these are examples of finished trees now I wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm finding up in the air now a lot of our work is in these types of homeowner condominium townhouse association projects where there's building upon building upon building and the original developers want the place to look nice so they choose trees that are going to fit but a lot of times the choices of trees that they put in here grow far too large so their way of managing these trees is to continuously cut them back so they're not going into the buildings which perpetuates the problem it creates a high maintenance long-term need for doing pruning and the real irony of this is that if these were trees were planted in an area that didn't have the confines of buildings to deal with and walkways and and infrastructure you wouldn't have to prune them at all you could just leave them naturalized they'd become big beautiful wide-spreading trees they're park trees. They belong along creeks. They belong in wide open areas. All right, so back to the chipping here again. You can see that Eric's got his mask on now. Sorry, Eric, but I'm just looking out for your health. Which gets back to one of the things about this particular tree that is so irritating. There are different aspects of it, from the seed pods to the fuzz under the leaves that makes it very difficult to work on if you do it at the wrong time of the year. I think we're at the very end of the best time to do this because just as I identified these seed pods are ready to break open, had we done this say three or four weeks ago, 
I think all these seed pods would have been much, much harder and not been as volatile. So let's get up in the tree. This is where somebody stubbed this off. It was just a, a stub cut. And now you have four big branches and one small branch coming off that old stub cut. Now a sycamore tree, or a plane tree, is quick to absorb these old wounds. Look at that little one there. And these old wounds, you'll get all this active cambium tissue that grows up and completely encapsulates these wounds. But not always. In this case, you can see that there's plenty of tissue that has grown all the way up and around it and has absorbed this wound. Now you can see where I have cut and pruned this tree to get it back to a more natural type of a framework. You can see now there's just two on this one end cut and I've taken some weight off. I've thinned it out. I've opened it up. I've, I've pruned it in such a way that I'm trying to retain the terminal buds on at least one section of this area for each area that I'm pruning. So this is a topped off branch and it had multiples that, kept, that were on there. Here's another one and you can see some of them got pinched off and they're, they're dead. So that one's dead and the one behind me is dead. It was a little bit tougher to break that one off but as they dry they will just drop out of the trees. And when the property owners walk around and see these broken branches on the grounds that's when they start to panic. And they say, oh, we've got to take care of these trees. Well, unfortunately, because of what has been done to these trees repeatedly for such a long time, the maintenance increases annually. Every year or every couple of years, you've got to get up here and do some corrective pruning to keep them away from the buildings, keep them a little bit lighter. Here's where one of my guys made some pruning cuts from the ground with a pole pruner and I was pretty irritated when I saw this. So I'm going in here and I'm cleaning up his mistakes. You know, that's a big problem and I'm not afraid to show it, but most tree trimming companies, that's how I pruned it and cleaned it up there, most tree pruning companies see these jobs as production work. And they just go in and they just cut, 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 cut and the property managers and the people who live here, they really don't know the difference. Here you can see where a cut was made a long time ago that was just a stub, and now there's four little branches on it. Well, now it's not a problem. If you don't do anything about it in five years' time, the weight that is going to be associated with this one branch will lead to a failure. So the pruning, unless it's done properly, will cause limb failure. It's ironic because we're trying to take care of these trees but in doing so if you get the wrong type of pruning in here you're just creating more work for yourself a much more expensive tree to maintain and it doesn't develop the way it's supposed to develop. You can see I've got a fairly sharp pair of hand pruners there, secteurs as they're called some places. And you can do a lot of work with hand pruners up in these trees. You can, get, you can take cuts quite often depending upon the wood. I'll take them up to an inch or an inch and a half in diameter. And the rest of it I do with hand pruners. Occasionally I'll clean them up with a, with a chainsaw. There's more bad cuts on this same tree. He just walked around with a pole pruner and reached up and went bam, 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 bam. And uh, What can I say? Here's an old cut. You can see where it's been broken off and it's branched out into two. There you can see where the branch comes up and does a quick convergence into a different direction. There's an old cut down there that has been absorbed. And if you look further down the branch, you can see that they don't always completely seal up. And look at that one. So when you say there's rules about trees, you can say quite often this will happen, but in the same breath, quite often these pruning wounds will lead to pretty serious weaknesses and decay pockets and, and drying out and, and dead branches. So the pruning that you do, here's what, a, what this tree looks like when it's all done. It still looks pretty good and um, I, I wish I had some images of what it looks like when it's finished. You can see all the branches on the ground here. 
This was a tree that um, one of my guys pruned and said, okay, it's done, and walked away. And I went over to it and I said, no, that's not done. And I went back up there and did some more work. So there's lots and lots of these sycamores in this project. And for you Brits out there, I'm sorry. I, I know you call the sycamore and uh, a maple. We don't call it over here in the States. So here's an area where there was a bad cut. And then somebody came along and cut again and cut again. And, and many times over the years, it was cut back to stubs. And it's, it's almost creating like a, a pollarded type nodule. I'm sure there's a term for that. I can't remember what it is, though. But um, there, that's after I've pruned it. So I hope you found this video helpful and educational, and you can better learn how to read a tree so you can make the correct decisions when you do the pruning. I am not old.